Hi, and welcome back to Newsarama.com's ongoing coverage of New York Comic Con. We are here with Hector Sanchez, producer on Injustice, Gods Among Us. How you doing, Hector? I'm doing great. This is awesome, man. This is like the perfect target audience to like show this game off. It's amazing, incredible. So what's the response been like here on this first uh, early preview night of the of the con? It's been good. We've had the super passionate fans like, oh my god, Superman would never be able to get hurt by Catwoman. And then we have the people that like, wow, that's a really cool video game. So we have both ends of the spectrum on it. It's been, uh, it's been really good. Does Catwoman have like kryptonite in her claws or what's going on here? Well, what's going on is that it's a video game. So people <laughs> shouldn't really like, go that far on it. But to be honest, um, you know, just like in MK versus DC a few years ago, we had a reason why Catwoman could like do anything to Superman and things of that sort. So we're definitely going to explain why the characters aren't an even playing field in our story mode. We're just not revealing any specifics about the story mode just yet. But trust us, we're going to explain it. It's not just random. Now, you guys announced a new character this week to go along with showing it off here. Green Arrow. Yes. Why was Green Arrow an important character for you guys to include in Injustice? Well, you know, we wanted to pull not only the like super top tier, like casual known characters like Superman and Batman as well. We wanted to pick characters whose uh, whose kind of personality types mirrored what we were trying to get across in the game. So when the story kind of details go out, you'll it'll make more sense of why Green Arrow was such an important element to have in our game. I'll, 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 excuse me, obviously, Oliver Queen is. Uh, has a very cool backstory. We really wanted to kind of take advantage of that. And he's just an awesome character. I mean, with arrows, I mean, he fits perfectly into kind of a, a fighting game kind of a, a game. He's got zoning capabilities. He's got martial art abilities. He's got all the kind of aspects that made him like fit totally. But we also announced two other characters as well. Uh, Green Lantern and Joker were also announced this week as well. They're not playable, but uh, pretty big announcements as right, well. Right, they made their way onto the cover art that got released. Yeah, they did. It's uh, It's been really, really cool. You know, people are excited about it. But, you know, the more characters that release, the more uh, the fans are coming up and saying, well, what about this person? What about this person? Well, you know, you guys have too many Batman characters in there. Like, where is this? But, you know, patience. We have more character announcements coming out, and everyone will be happy in the end. Yeah, there's quite a few slots open on that character selection screen, I couldn't help but notice. Are all those slots going to be filled, or...? Well, that is a decoy. That uh, oh, player selecting okay. is a decoy. But, you know, uh, we hit a sweet spot with Mortal Kombat in the amount of characters that were in that game. You know, right. you know, if you have way too many characters, uh, they're diluted and they become carbon copies of each other, and you just can't balance a game that way. But if you have too few, then the game becomes repetitive and there's not that many options. So, you know, look at the kind of uh, the character number that we had in Mortal Kombat, and you're going to see around that number for Injustice, because we figure that that's a real sweet spot for the amount of characters that are in the game. Because it's kind of uh, in compartmentalized in the DC universe, we've been able to take certain liberties with our fighting game engine that our fans would probably kill us if we tried to inject in Mortal Kombat. So uh, <laughs> okay. it's allowed us to kind of do things uh, a little bit differently and experiment with some kind of design choices. For instance, we removed the block button. Uh, you know, in Mortal Kombat, you know, we've always had a dedicated block button going back to 1992. Yeah. Uh, now it's a more traditional kind of back to block, which uh, changes things up a little bit differently. Uh, we don't have the four face buttons as different attacks now. Now we have three attack buttons. We have one character ability button. And the character ability button is uh, differentiated based on who you choose. So for Cyborg, his character ability is that he gets to regenerate health. Um, for Green Arrow, he gets to fire arrows, but based on different button combinations, you can pull different types of arrows out of his quiver. So he's got a freeze arrow, he's got a fire arrow, he's got an electric arrow. Oh, uh, Superman, man. not that he needs it, but his gimmick is that he gives himself extra super strength. So, you know, his combos go from it's maybe a third. a little extra sunlight. <laughs> exactly. It makes him a little <laughs> bit stronger. So every character is a little bit different. So that's something that we've been able to incorporate in Justice that's not in Mortal Kombat. So cool. uh, another thing that we do have is background interactables, and that's something that we haven't had in Mortal Kombat before. Based on where you choose to fight, you can interact with the background in different ways. So if in your metropolis, you can kind of pick up a car off the side of the street if you're Superman and slam somebody with it. Or if you're in LexCorp uh, Insurgency, you can kind of use the lasers that they're using to build all these evil robots and aim them at your opponent. There's just different things in every background. So again, these are just design choices that uh, maybe wouldn't fit in the Mortal Kombat universe, but because Injustice is its own franchise, we can kind of put them in and see how people react. Is there any danger of too much going on or uh, how are you reaching that balance? Kind of what we're doing is we really want this to be akin to like an over-the-top summer blockbuster uh, kind of feel, you know, okay. big you know, big events going on, you know, background damage going on, things coming out all over the place so uh, it might seem a little it's hectic. Like the big Superman doomsday fight at the end of uh, the, the animated movie? Exactly. Stuff like that. Like things, uh, things of that sort so that 
the background isn't going to look the same at the end of the match that it was in the beginning. There's just so much going on and so much kind of action going on that it's really going to feel that you're in this big kind of epic fight every single time that you're in there, and that's what we're really pushing for. One of the things I've loved seeing is the over-the-top special moves, like Superman punching somebody out into space and Flash running around the entire world to gather momentum. Uh, can you reveal, have you guys revealed any more of those? Can you reveal maybe what Green Arrow's is? To, so Green today? Arrow, uh, he has a, a pretty interesting one. Basically, he fires an arrow, ironically, into the, <laughs> wow. into, and it's green, uh, into the There ground. you have it. Green Arrow <laughs> fires an arrow that is green. That is his special move. <laughs> He Nobody fun. use Green Arrow. No, <laughs> no he no, fires it into the ground and it kind of pops the opponent up and it makes the opponent vulnerable and pops him up into the air. He slides under them and uh, kind of shoots another arrow that wraps him in a kind of a cord. And as the opponent kind of falls to the ground, he does a flip over him and fires three explosive arrows into him <laughs> and pops the guy up at the end. So if you're fast enough at the end of the combo, you can actually combo into it and continue it the way. So it's a, it's a pretty intense thing. And those are... You know, NetherRealm has always been known as kind of a very cinematic kind of uh, gameplay studio. We have right. like the big fatalities, we had x-rays in the last game, there's always kind of these big events in the game. Uh, we wanted to incorporate that into Injustice, so we're doing that with the super moves. So, but instead of waiting until the end of the match to have the opportunity, we've incorporated them into kind of the gameplay and you have to set up your opponent in the right position to right. like unleash them and stuff like that, so it's pretty cool. How much fun was it just coming up with those? You, you got so enthusiastic talking about it, it sounds like you guys were just kind of sitting around a table and you were like, okay, so what if you could do this? And then you actually made it happen. Well, that's the best part of the job, right? Like, uh, you know, when we're working on Mortal Kombat, we have these kind of like fatality design meetings, right? Where we all sit around the corner and everyone just like spits out ideas. And it was the same uh, thing for the super moves. Like people are basically coming up with ideas, spitballing them, saying, what about this? What about this? And we'll use one element from one guy and another element from somebody else and kind of mix them together until we get to kind of a, a nice thing where everybody's kind of happy. So it's good. It can be contentious. You know, there are different uh, varying opinions on, well, I think this person should do this and this person should do that. But right. in the end, if it makes the product better, who cares if we're yelling at each other and we don't talk to each other for weeks at a time. Of the characters that have been announced so far, has anyone surprised you a little bit? You know, Solomon Grundy, uh, to me, was kind of a, a, a big surprise uh, for a character just because uh, you wouldn't normally think of him in a, kind of the same match as like a Green Arrow or something because he's a big kind of plotting character. Right. Um, he's a, definitely a different kind of fight style. You have to be in close. It's a lot of command grabs, things of that sort. Um, Nightwing was another, you know, surprise uh, for me as well. But people really, you know, seem to be gravitating towards that. And Harley Quinn, obviously, like... Who would have thought that Harley Quinn would kind of evolve from, you know, a character in an animated series to now a full-fledged, like, you know, she can fight on par with Superman and Flash. So it's, uh, it's been pretty cool. I think some people think she probably can't. Yeah. Some people can't, but they'd be surprised. And if they really, you know, had any doubts, they should come by New York Comic Con, play the game and see for themselves, or pick it up in April of 2013. There you go, and there you go. Stay tuned to Newsarama for much more from New York Comic Con 2012.